Good afternoon, Mount Peace members, friends, and visitors. Welcome to Noonday Bible Study. If this is your first time joining us for our Noonday Bible Study, then please know that you're also invited to our in-person Bible study. Pastor Terry leads that every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Right now, we're going to study. Um, we've been focusing on women in the Bible, or that's what we will do for the entire month of March, because March is Women's History Month. Women's History Month 2022. So on last week, we focused on talking about Tamar. Talking about Tamar. And so on today, we're going to continue to honor this month, this Women's History Month, by really looking at women in the Bible and how God speaks through their stories. So if you have your Bible, on today, I'm going to look at John chapter 4, verses 1 to 14. John chapter 4, verses 1 to 14. Now, as you're finding that, those scriptures there, please know that that's the story of the woman at the well. The story of the woman at the well, and we're going to focus on winning at the well, okay? So the idea for our Bible study on this afternoon is winning at the well. How many people like to win? No matter your age, you may like to win. You certainly don't like to lose. I mean, losing doesn't feel good. Well, we're going to see and look into this moment in history where a woman was winning. And we know that as we celebrate Women's History Month, we celebrate so many women who are winning in their own way. And even if they are deceased, they won while they could, while they lived, right? And so as we're reflecting on winning, I want you to think about a woman that you consider to be a winner. And of course, I'm not talking about just like the one woman running a race or something like that. Maybe she is a track star, <laughs> um, but I'm talking about a woman who is winning in life. As you think about a woman who is a winner, I'm hoping that it can be someone who inspires you. And I'm hoping that it can even be the woman that you see in the mirror every day. So maybe the winning woman in your life is you. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you are male, whether you're a boy or you're a man, then there may be a woman that you know um, that is a winner to you. Let's think about that. Do you know any woman who is a winner? You can share if you like. And as you're thinking about a woman who is a winner, I want you to share, if you're sharing, I want you to share what makes her a winner. What makes a woman a winner? All right. Okay, so we're thinking about that. Okay. So there are many things about a woman that can make her a winner. Many things. So thank you for thinking about it. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, so we're going to look at this woman in the Bible. And she's winning at the well. So thank you so much for sharing um, a woman who is a winner. Thank you for thinking about those attributes that a women woman has as we're thinking about Women's History Month. So I hope I've given you time to find John chapter 4 verses 1 to 14 as we think about winning at the well. John 4 verses 1 to 14, winning at the well. So I tell you what, let me just give us a summary of this story of this woman at the well. How about we do that? So if you have your Bible open, what you should see there is that the story begins as Jesus and his disciples are traveling, right? They're traveling from Jerusalem. The Bible is showing us in the south to Galilee in the north, okay? So they're going to now make the journey shorter. Jesus wants to make the journey shorter. And so the Bible tells us that they take the quickest route um, and that quickest route, quickest route is through Samaria. So I'm just summing it up. So then we see in that scripture, in those scriptures, John 4, 1 to 14, that Jesus is tired and thirsty. So we know that Jesus was both divine and Jesus was also in the flesh, right? A human man. So he got thirsty and he got tired. So the Bible tells us that Jesus sits at a well. And that well is Jacob's well. And so his disciples go into the village. Do you see that? The disciples go into the village and they travel about a half a mile away. And what they're doing is going to get food, right? 
So then it's about noon and it's the hardest part of the day. And this Samaritan woman, this woman comes to Jacob's well. She comes to get water from that well and she comes at this inconvenient time to draw water from the well. So that's pretty much what we see in verses 1 to 14. So I hope that you see that there. I try my best to sum it up. So what makes this a story of winning at the well? What exactly does that mean? Okay, so I'm going to give you some time to look at it. Let's see, what do you pull out of there that may uh, help you to see that this woman is winning at the well? Okay, I want you to take time to think about that even after our Bible study because I'm going to pull some things out. Um, let's see. I see about two things that I could pull out, but I want you to pull some things out too, okay? So even as I'm talking, if you want to share what you see, that's okay. What makes her a person that's winning? Well, as I look at, at this, the first thing I see, let's see, um, let's see, during this encounter at the well with this woman, oh, Jesus breaks some Jewish customs, okay? Jesus breaks some Jewish customs. Let's see. Okay, the fact that he even spoke to a woman, for our Bible scholars, we understand, right, that, you know, in the days of antiquity, a woman was a second-class citizen. So for a man to even speak to a woman, um, you know, that was a little different if we think about the culture at the time. Okay, so that's one Jewish custom that Jesus is breaking. And then, um, this woman is a Samaritan woman, so, you, you know, we are going to point that out. She's a Samaritan woman, and Jews traditionally despise Samaritans. For centuries, the Jews and the Samaritans, they rejected one another. They rejected each other. So that's another thing um, that Jesus is breaking that custom of Jews, because he was Jewish and she's Samaritan, but he's actually talking to her. Okay, so she would be winning just by virtue of the fact that this man is talking to her, this Jewish man is talking to her, and the way that Jesus was dressed would have indicated that he was a Jew. And then thirdly, let's see. Um, oh, yes. So if we read, we will find that Jesus asked her to get him a drink of water. But you know what? In that day and time, if she would have used her cup or her jar or her bucket um, to retrieve that water for Jesus, it would have made Jesus uh, ceremonially unclean. Yes. So those are some things when we consider the culture. And when we read the Bible, we have to be sure that we consider context, that we consider uh, customs, and we consider um, really um, what's going on at the time, the culture. Okay, so context, culture, customs, those three C's are important. So the point that I'm making is when we think about winning in the experiences that we have with God, She's winning at the well. When we think about winning in this life, when we think about our encounter with God, we need to understand that God can do unconventional things. This is what we're seeing, uncommon things, something unusual on our behalf. That's the first thing that I was able to pull out of this, uh, this encounter, this story of this particular woman in history as we're celebrating Women's History Month. This woman saw that God can do unusual things. God can do uncommon things on her behalf. And you know, that has not changed. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God can do some things that people would not think that should happen because it's uncommon or it's um, not traditionally done that way or it's unconventional or it's unusual, then guess what? The God that we serve is the God who can do that for us. Yes, the God that we serve is not so concerned about what we think is right, but God is concerned about getting us to understand what is right for him to get the glory out of our lives. So no matter where this woman was when considering her thoughts, you know, this is a Jew. Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, this is a man or, or, or he asked, he's asking me for water and I have a, something dirty. He's a Jew. This will be unceremonial. This will make him, you know, ceremonially unclean. Regardless of we, whatever we are thinking in our heads, God has a plan for our lives. So that's the first thing. God can do these unusual things on our behalf. And I'm glad about that. Do something, God, unusual. Do something, God, uncommon. Do something, God, unconventional, and I will give you the glory. Hmm. So that's the first thing. Let's keep looking. 
So then when Jesus asked her for a drink of water, his behavior shocks the woman at the well. Um, so then, you know, she's seeing like, oh, look, okay, so he's doing these things. But then, as if it weren't enough, he told her that he could give her living water. You look at verses uh, 13, 14, 13 and 14. He tells her that he can give her living water. Now, think about that now. She already knows what regular, like, just natural water is. That's what she's going to retrieve. But then this man called Jesus starts talking to her about living water and saying that he could give it to her as a gift from God so that she would never thirst again. So we're reading this in 2022. But imagine Jesus saying that to you in, her t in, in this time, in her time, right? He uses the words living water. And what he's doing really is referring to eternal life. That's what he means when he's saying living water. Eternal life. The gift that will satisfy her soul's desire. So her mouth may have desired this uh, water that she's accustomed to. But her life, her soul needed eternal salvation, eternal and eternal experience. And only Jesus could give her that living water as a gift. And that's what it would be. So Jesus tells her anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, this natural water. But those who drink the water I give will never thirst again. Do you see that? Verses 13 and 14 will never thirst again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. So when somebody asks you, what is that inside of you? You have to know that you have the gift of eternal life inside of you. You have that water, that living water that you, you will never thirst. Your soul won't thirst. Now you may have to draw, uh, grab, you know, an Aquafina or Dasani every once in a while for this, you know, physical body, right? For this flesh. And I hope a lot of us are getting more of that in the Lenten season, right? But this living water, it's only available through Jesus Christ. Only God can give it to you. So at first, the Samaritan woman, if we keep looking at this, she did not fully understand Jesus' meaning. But eventually, she got it. And oh my goodness, once she got it. That's when she was winning at the well. So she was no longer only just walking to the well. She was not waiting at the well. She was not wondering at the well. But she's now winning at the well. Why? Because Jesus revealed himself as God. Jesus revealed himself to her. She received something that no one else could give and no one could take away. And that is the blessing of an, a great encounter with God. So then, here comes the question for us on this afternoon. This lunchtime. In March, as we're celebrating and we're really recognizing um, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us in this Lenten season, we are denying ourselves. So since you've been in this Lenten season, where has God met you? Where has God met you? Think about that. God met this woman at the well. At what point in your life were you having a dry desert experience? And God met you at the well. Where has God met you? Where was your life dry and God gave you, oh my goodness, living water? Where has God met you? Maybe you can't answer that now, but after this Lenten season, even after this Bible study, you can reflect on how God, where God has met you and how God is meeting you somewhere right now. And if you can't you know, put together an idea of where God has met you, then we're fasting and praying, right, in this season. So I want you to pray about where you need God to meet you. Where do you need God to meet you? Hmm. All right. And then lastly, the same way that uh, God, Jesus revealed himself as God to this woman in this text, what has God re revealed about God to you? What has God revealed about himself to you? If that's a difficult question to answer, then this is more information on what to pray for in this season. If we're fasting and praying, we have to be intentional about what we're fasting and praying for and how we're doing it. 
and not just something that we just say we're going to do every year because this is the season, you know. Okay, I'm going to do it better this year by answering these questions. Where has God met me? Where do I need God to meet me? And what has God revealed about himself to me? I need to pray on those things. We need to pray on those things. So this woman was winning at the well because she could now articulate, hey, I've seen a man. Who told me everything I ever done. Read, read the rest of, of this John. Okay. This John uh, chapter uh, 4 verses 1 to 14. Okay. She says, I have met this man. I know this man. You see. So she was able to go and tell people about Jesus because of this encounter. So make sure you read so that you will be able, even after this Lenten season, to articulate why you're winning in Jesus Christ. And no one will have to tell you that. You'll be able to tell everyone else. Let's pray. God, thank you so very much for this opportunity to look into the life of this woman in history. We thank you, God, for the woman at the well. We thank you, God, for the moments in our lives where we have been at the well. And we thank you, God, in those desert-like situations, you have provided us with a drink of water that has provided us to where we will never thirst again. So thank you, God, for the gift of eternal life. And God, if there be one who does not know you, I pray, God, that they will thirst after righteousness. Thank you, God, for showing us more of you. Thank you for the Mount Peace Baptist Church. Thank you for Pastor Terry. And thank you, God, for helping us to win. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God bless you. May you go in peace and may you really reflect on how God is causing you to win each and every day. Have a great lunch and continue to stick to that Lenten sacrifice. God bless you. See you. Well, not see you, but see you next time. Okay. <laughs> see me next time. Okay. God bless you. Have a great day.